something is brewing with the reservation system at Disneyland. My, my spidey senses are tingling. Uh, I feel a disturbance in the force, whatever you want to call it. I got a feeling things are about to change soon with the Disneyland reservation system. I hear things, and a lot of it winds up happening. And I've heard things, positive things, about big changes coming to the reservation system. But it's when actual events happening that line up, that reconcile with what I'm hearing behind the scenes, that's when I get a little bit excited. A few days ago, you might have seen or heard that Disney was going to start enforcing their Magic Key reservation no-show policy. To catch everyone up, the Magic Key reservation no-show policy is a three-strike system. Make a reservation, but then don't go to the park. That's a no-show, and that's a strike. Get three strikes within a 90-day stretch, and your pass is locked out of making reservations for 30 days. In other words, you can't go to Disneyland for 30 days. It's a policy, it's a rule that got a little bit of bad press. When Magic Keys first became available, that was one of the things that people sort of noticed and said, hey, this doesn't sound right. But really, nothing ever came of it. I haven't heard anything about this system being in effect since the Magic Keys became available. Now, I will say, though, that the Magic Key reservation no-show policy is necessary. It's necessary to prevent squatting, to prevent Magic Key holders from booking an endless amount of reservations just on the off chance that they might decide to go to the park that day. If you're going to have a reservation system at a theme park like they do at Disneyland, you need two things. You need a limit on the number of reservations and you need a penalty for not showing up for that reservation. It sucks, but it has to be done if you're going to if you're going to do the reservation system. Only thing is is that the policy was there. Disney did have a no-show policy, but there was no enforcement. They as far as I know, there's been no enforcement at all. So, why the change in policy? Well, remember the phrase, not a change in policy. Why a change in the enforcement of the existing policy? Has have, have no-shows been a problem at Disneyland? I mean, they do lose money. Every time somebody no-shows, that's a, that's a revenue loss for Disney. It's a reservation that could have been used by somebody else, somebody who would have spent money. So take that number of no-shows every day and multiply that by X dollars that they would have spent. And, you know, you've got a significant amount of money that Disney is not taking in. But I actually don't think that that's been a big enough problem by itself for Disney to suddenly decide that they want to change how they're enforcing this rule. It's been suggested to me by some really smart people that the reason that they're going to start cracking down on no-shows is because there's going to be a change in the reservation system. They're going to change how many reservations a match key holder can make. We think they're going to add more, maybe up to eight, maybe 10, maybe more. Now, again, this is just supposition and conjecture. We're reading the tea leaves. I love to do this, <laughs> but it does make a lot of sense if you take all of what's happening and put it all together. If you're going to start enforcing the no-show policy, it's very likely it's because you're going to start giving more reservations to Magic Key holders. You start enforcing the no-show policy because your plan is to give more reservations to Magic Key holders. If you start giving more reservations to Magic Key holders, 8, 10, 12, who knows, that increases the likelihood of squatting. The more reservations, the more, the more chances, the more likely it is that they're going to start squatting on dates. And <laughs> if more key holders are squatting, then that increases the likelihood of more no-shows. You're going to have more no-shows now than you've ever had before. And if there's going to be more no-shows, then that's even more revenue lost. So Disney does, definitely wants to start cracking down on that now, getting people warmed up for that. So there's that. But that asks another question. Why? Why would Disney want to create give more reservation slots to Magic Key holders. Why do that to begin with? Well, simply put, the parks aren't busy enough for Disney. They want more people in the parks, and at the same time, they get to appease Magic Key holders who have been very vocal about their displeasure for the Magic Key system and the reservation system. My guess is that they're not getting the turnout that they were hoping for. I know it seems like it's super busy, busy as heck in the parks right now, and it's definitely busier today than it's ever been since the parks reopened, but it's still not even close to busy levels that we saw pre-COVID, or busy as busy as Disney wants it to be. One answer to this problem, which is a result of uh, Disney APs not going to the park as often as they normally would have gone, and that's because of the reservation system. One answer is to get rid of the reservation system completely. And that, by itself, is a rumor that I've been hearing more and more uh, in the past few weeks. In some capacity, the reservation system is in jeopardy, be that a reconfiguring or an elimination of it. I know, <laughs> we just posted a story the other day about Disneyland president Ken Potrock saying that the reservation system is here to stay, or more or less. He, I think the, the, the question was, I'm asked if the reservation system is going to 
to end anytime soon? And he said, I don't think so. That sounds like it's here to stay, but that's also a line that they have to take because they want the reservation system to stay. They're trying to keep the reservation system. They love it. Magic Key holders don't. Did you get the survey? The one asking about the Magic Key program and the reservation system. Did you get that survey? I did. Very interesting. Uh, so much so that I had originally planned to do a whole video on that, on, on all the questions asked, because they were very interesting, very illuminating as to Disney's state of mind. The tone of the survey was something like, we think you're pissed about the Magic Key program and the reservation system. How pissed are you? How likely are you to renew? Do you think we understand you? Do you like the benefits that we offer? Do you go as often as you thought you would? Do you find the reservation system stressful? And this is what I like at the end. This is the last question asked. You got any other annual passes for other parks? <laughs> it was a great survey, one that allowed Magic Key holders to sort of express themselves in a lot of different ways uh, on on all kinds of levels of the program, of the Magic Key program and the reservation system. And I don't think the results went Disney's way, not at all, because I, I can't imagine very many Magic Key holders are happy with the system in place. And by the way, that survey went out just a few days before Disney made their announcement about enforcing the no-show policy. So survey results, the survey goes out on something like the 27th, I think, of February. Uh, the results come in, they, they, they leave it open only for, I think it's a day or two max, two days max, and then it expires. They, they can process the results March 1st, March 2nd, something like that. Plenty of time for them to analyze the data and then come up with some sort of um, you know, new program or, or a tweak of the system. And I think it goes without saying that Disney asking Magic Key holders about their levels of satisfaction suggests to me that they are worried about how it's affecting attendance. And if they're concerned about it affecting attendance, then that means they are not getting the attendance numbers that they were hoping for. They want more people in the park, which takes us back to the beginning. All of this is sort of a self-fulfilling, I mean, it's confirmation bias perhaps, <laughs> you could make that argument, but it all comes together neatly. How do they get more people in the park without getting rid of their baby, the thing that they're so proud of, the reservation system? How do they get more people, more APs, more magic keys in the park Without doing that, well, the only way to do that is by increasing the number of reservations that they're able to make. But that creates more opportunity for squatting, more opportunity for no-shows, more opportunity for lost revenue. Let's start cracking down on those APs right now, get them used to it so that when we do uh, increase the number of reservations, they're already prepared for being mindful of, of showing up for those reservations. Speculation and conjecture, definitely, but it's all based on logical progressions. But what do you think, Fresh Baked? Actually, I want to hear from any of you who have no-showed for a reservation. I want to get a, I want to get a ratio on, on the number of no-shows out there. And did you hear from Disney if you no-show? Did you get a strike? Did you get a penalty? Did you get any kind of warning? Have you heard from Disney at all if you no-showed? Did anybody have their AP blocked for 30 days? <laughs> that, I want to know how many of those are out there. There's got to be some watching this show, right? And then follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney. That's Fresh with no E. And on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show you support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Fresh Baked.